I just wanted to take a second to thank every single one of you who continue to listen to the show, who continue to reach out and leave your feedback and let us know how the show is making an impact in your life. When I started this show almost three years ago, I had no idea that it would turn into not only therapy sessions for me, (laughs) but also for many of you. October 15th, 2021 marks the three-year anniversary of the Walk in My Stilettos podcast, the interview show where we are sharing inspiring stories of resilience, helping other women to walk in a manner worthy of their calling. It's been a complete honor this year to be globally ranked in the top 1.5% most popular show out of all podcasts. That's over 2.6 million shows. And since starting the show, we have ranked in many countries on their top charts, including number two in Jamaica, number two in Bahamas, number three in Kenya, number five in Nepal, top 10 in Canada, and even top 18 in South Korea. I just want to take this time to include all of you. We would love to do an episode in honor of the three-year anniversary where we get to hear your voice. So I'm asking you to head over to my personal Instagram page, that's at the real McKinney Smith, and send me a voice note, a voice note with your review of how the show has impacted your life or what episode resonated with you the most. And we'll share it on an upcoming episode. And we'll also take all of your entries and put them into a raffle to choose one of you listeners to be a future guest on the Walk in My Stilettos podcast that is helping other women to walk in a manner worthy of their calling. McKinney Smith. In 2009, while going through a divorce, I decided to jump straight into entrepreneurship. In 2012, I lost my sister and asked myself, what legacy do I want to leave behind? Since then, I've become a serial entrepreneur, helping other women publish their books, produce their podcasts, and reach their big goals to walk in their greatness. I realized the importance of sharing our stories of resilience and how it can be another's guide to walk in a manner worthy of their calling. We are blessed to be a blessing. So get ready to be blessed with an inspiring testimony. Hey, Legacy Leavers. Thank you for joining us on the Walk in My Stilettos podcast, the top 1.5% most popular show in the world where we have conversations with amazing women that are letting us step into their shoes. I help women to own their voice so they can create impact, prosperity, and legacy. I get inspired when I see another woman succeeding, but what interests me more is her backstory and her mindset on how she got there. Today, we have Christina Ray. She is a mother and entertainer. She is trained in acting, classical music, and dance. She's also an America's Got Talent season 15 finalist, where she earned the golden buzzer from Heidi Klum, which her straight to the quarterfinals and ended her AGT journey in third place. As a single mother, Christina has been through her fair share of hardships, including homelessness, which she shared during her audition on AGT, where she was asked by Simon to sing a second song. Christina is the second singing act to make it to the finals after being stopped by Simon in her in her audition. However, she is the highest placing singing act to be stopped by Simon. She has performed in the infamous Apollo Theater in New York and has appeared in off-Broadway productions. So please welcome to the show, Christina Ray. Hi, and thank you so much for having me. <laughs> thank you so much, Christina, for agreeing to come on and share your story with us. I'm beyond excited. I feel like ever since your episode aired on June 9th in 2020, I've been like praying and saying, okay, God, <laughs> I would love to hear her story. And I am just honored and blessed to have this opportunity today. Well, I'm as honored and blessed as well, and I'm happy that my story is inspiring a whole lot of people. 
Absolutely. It sure is. So before we get to where you are presently, I like to start the show with a bit of an icebreaker question. I like to go back, back in time, because I believe like little kids, you know, they had these vivid imaginations of who they want to be and what they plan to do with their life before society and the world tries to limit them and tell them to be realistic or, you know, to, to think of something quote unquote normal. So I would love to know before you got to where you are presently, what did you want to be as a little girl? <laughs> um, as a little girl, I wanted to be a figure skater. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and um, <laughs> I, every Sunday, I, I think when I was a young, in my close younger days, I remember, um, I want to say her name was Yamaguchi, uh, or being a figure skater. And I would put my socks on and I would skate in the kitchen for hours, <laughs> like just skating backwards, or I would put on my dad's huge skates and I would just push myself down the uh, hallway in his skates because, of course, my feet are too small. But <laughs> I wanted to be a figure skater for the longest time. The I longest. love it. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Okay, so tell us the story, the journey of how you got to where you are today then, to go from the little girl who wanted to be a figure skater to now this, you know, classically trained singer, this African dancer, this woman with many hats and many talents. Um, Honestly, I never thought that I would even have what I have or be where I am now with uh, my upbringing because, like, I grew up thinking that I'm just, you know, regular, trying to fit in and it used to hurt my feelings so bad that I was not accepted as a a normal little kid because no matter what, where I went in, and if it was chorus class, I was always going to be loud, not because I wanted to be loud, but just my voice was like, I'm here, mm-hmm. accept me. And I was not that kind of accept me person. I was, I want everybody to be my friend. And because of the voice I had at such a young age, it scared people away, like, to the point where my choral teacher called me Mariah Scary in class. Oh, wow. <laughs> and so while it was like, oh, at least I'm being compared to Mariah, it was scary because sometimes even in the quietest moments of me singing anywhere, it will be so distinct. Like, my voice is always going to, like, pierce through a little bit. And so being here right now, from being homeless, I, as a pregnant woman, it was a journey because even though I was homeless as a pregnant woman, I was touring the entire time singing background uh, wow. for a Grammy, wow. Grammy Award winning artist, Mike Ferris, and we're on the Prevost, we're in uh, London, we're in Spain, and then I would come back to my Ford Explorer truck which was a 1999 version, so it's old, and it would break down, and it would just, you know, it was just life at that point, and I never dreamed that life would bring me here, that that it would be a brighter side to what I've gone through, because it's been hard, like, Mm -hmm. right now it's hard, (laughs) and Mm -hmm. it's not even just the, the pandemic, But, like, my story on AGT was I was homeless when I was pregnant. And, like, if I'm being very transparent, like, right now, I am back at that homelessness again. Oh, wow. I'm sorry to hear that. It's okay. Not because of anything I've done, but where I had my home, my town home, it turned into, uh, it was, it started as a random, you know, a random leak in the ceiling and then the ceiling fell apart. And now my whole home is mold infested. And so I'm just, it's a waiting game on what's next. It's when I'm still performing, I still have to push through, perform, sing and put on a smile as if it's not always, as if it's everything is perfect. And it's not perfect. So mm-hmm. being here at this juncture, being able to still share a story that is not as bright, but let people know that it is a brighter side to it, it it makes it worth it. Because mm-hmm. at first, before AGT, I just thought the struggle was just the struggle. But knowing that the struggle is 
inspiration later on, like on AGT. It's happened a whole lot of single women, single fathers, people in general realize that you can still pursue your dreams or your goals despite anything that any adversities that come in your in your life or anything that may seem like a negative will eventually be a positive. And so like being here on this platform as an artist and then feeling as if as a uh, in a personal life you're like under that platform mm-hmm. it's so different. And you have to find a happy balance or a happy medium just for your mental sake, just for your spirit's sake, because, you know, this world will tell you every day you're doing it wrong. Mm -hmm. And you have to know that all times, no matter what, you're doing your best. Even when you're not, I'm doing my best that I can do right now. And that's all that matters. Wow. Like, thank you for your complete transparency. And this is one of the reasons why I, I love doing this show is because Social media will show you people's highlight reel. You know, they show you the, the, the great moments. But on the podcast, we talk about the not so great moments. We talk about the adversities yeah. that you have to go through and the resilience that you are building and how you're using that to inspire other people. So I am just so grateful that, you know, you chose to just be vulnerable with us and, and share what your present situation is. And I'm sorry to hear that. And I pray that things turn around for you like so fast. I just, so how, how do you stay motivated? Honestly, I honestly don't know sometimes, but I mean, like I have my baby that's like, mommy, I'm so proud of you because I like hide everything sort of, but I'm very honest with my baby. And I think Honesty is the motivation for me because I have to be honest with myself that it's not always going to be perfect, but it will always be worth it. And Mm -hmm. my baby is always saying, mommy, I'm so happy. And it's the smallest things that because I can't give him everything I want to give him right now. And Mm -hmm. even though I'm a mom, uh, like even the fact that I'm able to shelter us and then it's taken away, it's like oh my gosh, what are you doing to me down here on this earth? Mm -hmm. Like, it feels like that. But when your baby is like, mommy, I'm so happy. I'm so proud of you. I'm just like, really? Like, do you (laughs) see this catastrophe around me right now? But you're still proud of me. Like, Mm -hmm. that motivates me because I'm I'm honest with what I'm going through. I feel what I'm going through. And I accept what I'm going through, not to be forever, but to be my going through at the moment. And so the motivation would have to be my baby and just being honest with it won't be this way forever. Mm -hmm. Do you see how our our children can be our our teachers? Like your your son, Jeremiah, is what, three? Four now. Four. Wow, four. Four years old. And he's showing an example of how the simplest things can still bring joy and make us happy. You know, as adults, we are looking at, you know, the the big things and what we can do and trying to be the perfect parent and the perfect woman or, you know, just trying to be this image of perfection that, you know, society has placed on us. But, you know, your son telling you that he's proud of you and he loves you and that he's happy. Like, to me, that's my vision of success. You know, when people assume how much money you make or what your life is like, you know, I don't care for those things. It's like, I have three kids and I've been a single mother for over 12 years. And the fact that I've been able to keep a roof over their head and food in their mouth, like that to me is success. Yes, absolutely. Because it's it's not easy out here. And being a single mother is different from having somebody to share the load with you. So Mm -hmm. you having three babies, I know is like, Oh my gosh, I need a minute. <laughs> because sometimes just getting those minutes in the closet where you just throw everything on the floor and just yell silently that so they don't run in and mommy, are you okay? It's just mm-hmm. those ma- those matter. Those Absolutely. matter so much. So how has motherhood changed you? Motherhood keeps me still because I am a person that if it feels like it's going to be too much or 
if it seems like something I'm not used to, I will run, okay? What I tell you, I will pack my bags and get on the road, and I will disappear for a few days. Like, that is what I would do. But being mm-hmm. a mother, I have to stay in the in the fight no matter what. Like, I have to put on my big girl panties mm-hmm. and my Olivia Pope wine glass <laughs> and suck it up. <laughs> and I'm just like sometimes I don't even have the good wine glass but I'm going to go to Aldi's give me a four dollar bottle of wine and call it a night and mm-hmm. I'm going to be okay but being a mother it makes you it makes you listen because sometimes being adults we feel like we have all the answers for ourselves because we have experience and we are the furthest Like, the older we get, we're the furthest away from who we truly are Mm -hmm. because we get settled in our ways, and we we think that because we are this way that it's okay. But when we stop and appreciate what our babies see in us and who they need us to be and realize that us disappointing our babies matters just as much as them disappointing us, it sort of makes you straighten up. It mm-hmm. makes you feel like that mama looking at you from the choir stand with that finger in their eyes. It, it makes you feel like that because I don't want my baby disappointed. Like, I want him to have everything that I have struggled to get. I want him to have it. I really honestly don't want my son to ever have to physically work a day in his life if he wants to physically work he can do that but I would rather let him know that this is how you establish money without losing your hair losing sleep losing your peace Mm -hmm. losing love for yourself because you feel like this world does doesn't appreciate me this world doesn't understand me and it's okay that no one understands you as long as you understand you and as long as you appreciate you you love you that is all that matters because my baby four year old is fine with pot, chicken pot pie or beef pot pie, and I'm over here trying to give him a good old <laughs> steak dinner or chicken dinner. Then he's like, "Mommy, I want a chicken pot pie tonight." <laughs> and I'm just like, what? These are ninety nine cents, and you want this that I just cook this? And mm-hmm. he's like, "Yes," and and it makes me happy that. It makes me be okay with the minimal things that I do have because I buy like I like my situation right now. I bought us new furniture. I bought us. I made it feel like home, and then mm-hmm. to lose it all, not having even my home for five months, nor wow. my furniture for five wow. months, it just puts you in like a a, a state of shock. But when your baby is just like, mommy, are we going to go to this house today? Are we going to go to this house today? He has options. And that's what Mm -hmm. he sees. He sees like we get to travel, not realizing that we are really traveling because our house is gone. Like we are really at grandbaby's house because our house is contaminated. (laughs) Mm. But he he just loves the fact that he's just with his mom and he Mm -hmm. and I have to mirror that and be okay with me just being with him even though I know I want my house I know I want to be in a state a more stable situation I have to mirror my child and be able to see that it's okay anyway it's okay Mm -hmm. with the minimal thing it is okay with the chicken pot pie it is okay with a cup of noodles it Mm -hmm. is okay yeah. And I learned so much from him. Yeah, absolutely. Like just even listening to you, the lessons that your your son is teaching you, like you said, in the simplicity of things, um, yeah. you know, the using your imagination. And that's one of the reasons why I asked the first question, because, you know, little kids, their imagination is so open and so mm-hmm. wide before, you know, we're boxed down and put into this box of of stereotypes and you know expectations so him viewing it as being able to travel and explore you said the older we get the further we get from from who we are and like that hit me that hit me hard yeah (laughs) yeah that 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 one hit me 
because there are so many, so many people, no matter you know what age we are, there are so many people that haven't tapped into the true essence of who they are or have lost that vision mm-hmm. of who they are because of the expectations that society or culture has put on them. And they forgot, you know, what they really wanted to do, or what was really important to them. And this pandemic has forced a lot of people to sit with themselves, to be still Absolutely. and to look at ourselves in the mirror. Mm-hmm. And people didn't realize who they truly were because we have work distracting us. We had our everyday regular life distracting us. And now, like, when the lockdown happened, people were forced to have to understand who they are. Mm -hmm. People were forced to have to actually be reminded of who the person that they married truly is. Mm -hmm. Because we have all these things constantly that that we have to keep doing we have to stay on the go or we're not living life but staying on the go we are just surviving living life Mm -hmm. is when you truly appreciate what you have in the moment in the moment only yeah Not, not what you just had not what you will have but living life is truly appreciating this moment at this very second Mm -hmm. and we forget to appreciate that yeah There are so many people who are not even being appreciative for the present moment because they're Mm -hmm. so focused on tomorrow or, you know, Mm -hmm. five years from now, whatever it is that they're chasing and their mind is always racing about their to-do list, you know, during this week, instead of enjoying the present moment, being in the present moment. Absolutely. Yes. So I would love to know when and where are you the happiest? My happiest moment lately has been when I am outside with my son and my honey and we are outside playing baseball in a, <laughs> in a backyard or we are playing basketball or we're just outside listening to music like in the past three months because that's how long I've been going through the housing situation mm-hmm. in the past three months those have been my happiest moments and I know like my happiest moments should be or the two people should be when I'm performing, but when I'm performing, that's what I'm doing, performing. Right. That's not who I am. And so when I'm at home in sweatpants and t shirts and my, my little chunks is just like, Mommy, you want some water? Because we gotta play basketball. <laughs> and I'm just like, I don't wanna play basketball, but let's go. And like it just this makes me so happy because I don't have it all and my baby does not know that. Mm-hmm. And he doesn't care that I don't have it all. He doesn't yeah. care. He just cares about the moment that we're about to play basketball and that my mommy is here and that daddy Ty is here and it's all good and gravy. Like, I'm mm-hmm. learning so much in these times just because of him, because we are so hard on ourselves, yeah. especially as mothers and, and fathers. Of course, but being a single mom, we're so hard on ourselves because the mom guilt. <laughs> we are all they have. Yes. Like, mm-hmm. we're like, if I'm not good, then I, I just can't be good, but I can't let them know it. But sometimes your babies already know what you don't yeah. say. Absolutely. They will Absolutely. come and just ask you, Mommy, are you okay? And I don't like lying to my baby. I'm just like, no, but I will be. Mm-hmm. You need you to need go to the airport so we can fly in the airplane in the hotel. <laughs> and I'm like, yes, that's exactly what would make me happy. But just knowing that somebody cares about you no matter what, mm-hmm. it, that, that makes it all okay. Yeah. Because us as single moms, sometimes we need somebody that will cuddle us when we fall and get a boo-boo on our knee. Just mm-hmm. as much as our babies do, and we don't let ourselves feel that. Yeah, I agree with you a thousand percent. You know, it, it's yeah. it's always interesting to me when I ask that question because the response is always the simplest things. It's the simple things yeah. that make us happy. You know, like you said, people assume that it is when you are performing, or people are, you know, assuming that it's going to be this grandiose moment. But when we are truly mm-hmm. happiest, it's with the simplest things. Like yeah. I, I yeah. think about, um, I, I read somewhere that uh, Jeff Bezos' wife is leaving him. And I'm like, there is no amount of money in the world <laughs> that can make people happy. 
Like his wife is no. leaving him, and like you know what I mean. So he's, it has he's nothing to do with money. It's just simple things. <laughs> oh, oh, them Bezos couldn't even do that right, but got Amazon right. Isn't that mm. something? <laughs> 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 okay, so I want to ask you a couple of questions about your your AGT experience because I watched that episode and. First of all, as soon as you walked on stage, I knew you could sing. I wanted to hug your son. <laughs> I was like, he is oh. so cute when he peeped out on stage. <laughs> but, he, was, he had to uh, he had to test the water. <laughs> yes, yes. He's like, he needs to check and make sure. Can, should mommy come out here? Are you guys going to be nice? <laughs> Absolutely. Yes. <laughs> he needed to set the atmosphere. <laughs> so <laughs> when when Simon asked you to sing a second song when you were done, I wanted to throw the remote at the TV. <laughs> so <laughs> I, I would love to know what was going through your mind when he asked you to sing a second song. My honest truth is, Lord, please let me remember these words because this is mm. the first time I'm ever singing this song live because I've never sang that song live and I wasn't given that song like, I wasn't given or that song wasn't approved for me to sing it until mm-hmm. two days before my audition. Mm. So I was freaking out a little bit because I mm. didn't even have the rehearsal track to rehearse when I was on my way there. Mm-hmm. So when he when he asked for it, I was just like, oh, just make sure the words are there. Just make sure the words are there. <laughs> like, I didn't care about anything else. Just let the words be there. <laughs> <laughs> because when he asked head, you, <laughs> I, my little eyes went to wondering. My eyes were like, "Okay." My eyes got so big when he asked for it. Just mm-hmm. like, as long as those words come, then I'm okay. <laughs> I was like, if I don't break this TV. <laughs> <laughs> so then when he asked you if he wanted some water and you're like no I'm just gonna let this adrenaline take me and I was like you are a trooper you like god bless you yeah because I didn't wanna like my voice is already warmed up and sometimes being a vocalist when you get too much water you cool your vocal cords back down and I'm just like no we're gonna use what we got right now <laughs> y'all mm-hmm. already bamboozled me telling me I wasn't about to go perform and now I'm on this stage performing so we're going to just flow on through this how you all have required me to flow through this (laughs) you surely showed him (laughs) because when (laughs) I I remember I think it's exact words when you uh, when he came up to hug you after the golden buzzer and I think he said to you I think you might be one of the best singers we've ever had yeah and for him to say that shocked Mm -hmm. me and I my friend Tiffany, she's more like a sister, but she's always like, yeah, this is my little sister. And Simon Cowell says she's the best vocalist he's ever done. Like, <laughs> stop doing that. Because it is so weird to hear that because we've seen Simon be like a, a grizzly bear and he's mm-hmm. a teddy bear. Yeah. Like he is love. And mm. he hugged me and it was a genuine hug. It wasn't just like, let me hug her because she's an, another contestant. It was just like he said. You're, he he said you're gonna go. You're gonna go home very well. Mm-hmm. And I was just like, okay, okay. I didn't know mm-hmm. what that meant. I didn't care, but I know I had Simon Cowell on my side. So people normally, you know, when they have a vision to do something and they're going after things, there's usually people around us. You know, whether it be family, friends, they're always. I'm going to say they're naysayers, but they're not necessarily coming from a a malicious place. They just sometimes Mm -hmm. need to see a thing happen before they believe a thing. So when you say that Simon was one of your, your big supporters, like were there, I guess, people that didn't support you before that now support you because of the AGT experience? Yes. And it really showed itself because of AGT. Like, um, I will say maybe almost seven or eight years ago, I I had a flat tire, <laughs> and I I called my father for some help, and like my father and I are not the closest, mm-hmm. we've not been that way for years, but he um <laughs> that day he was just at like running me down like I'm already on the side of the road with a flat tire and now you want to be more like you want to just be more chaotic 
Mm-hmm. And just kept saying, what makes you think you even going to make it? And at that moment, I had, I've, I've done demos for country artists. I had been on CMA, CMT Awards. Like, I've been in CMA Fest. I mm-hmm. like, and, and I say the country music part of it because that's what my dad listens to. Mm-hmm. And so the fact that he said that, I was just like, because I'm almost there. And a lot of people that you're listening to on the radio, like, I'm, in, I'm on their album. Like, that's mm-hmm. me. So, mm-hmm. so when you ask me what makes me think I'm even going to make it, it's the fact that you even have to ask that question. Mm-hmm. Because you wouldn't ask me if it were not possible. Mm-hmm. And because it is possible, I'm going to show you. But when AGT happened, my aunt, she told me every time I was about to come on the on uh, for AGT, my dad was at her house front and center on the TV. <laughs> and he was telling people, that's my daughter. That's my daughter. And I'm just like, you know, it would have made a lot more sense if you were that to me, you know, like yeah. if you motivated me on the phone or send a text message saying, I have your back now. I may not have had it in the past, but I have it now. Mm-hmm. And like on AGT, everybody wants to be your friend. Everybody is your cousin. Everybody is your <laughs> sister, your brother. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, I have never had these many uh, relatives. And now mm-hmm. I am, overflowing in a family reunion of <laughs> please follow me. And I don't want to follow you. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. I don't know you. I don't know any of this. But mm-hmm. it was it was my dad. I had friends that um that actually knew at 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 the time that I was homeless. But you know, it doesn't matter because it's not them and because they didn't know it would be connected to a story. You know, they don't really help. And so mm. with AGC, people were happy for me in 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 person, but they were not as happy once I was on the show because it wasn't them. So right. it, it, you know, it, it comes with the dark side. And the, the pretty side is what you all see, but it is some prettiness that goes behind the stage and then it's a lot of now you know you messed up for that you ain't been here all this time and now you Mm want to come like it's a whole lot of that and so yeah yeah, that my dad was the biggest one I was really shocked (laughs) wow you know I I asked that question because I know that for any woman that I've ever spoken to that is doing big things or has done you know amazing things there is always family, friends, or whomever mm-hmm. that are projecting their insecurities and, mm-hmm. you know, not supporting in the way that they should. And I've just been doing a lot of studying into to trauma and especially in the black community where there's a lot of, there's a lot of things that we've experienced traumatic culturally, but Mm-hmm. We're walking around with these trauma responses and everybody is angry and having these outbursts and, you know, having the crabs in a bucket mentality and doing all these things, but it comes from trauma. So I know that you've experienced, I'm sure, you know, on top of the homelessness and being a single mom and all of these adversities. And I just want to commend you for still being so positive. You know, when we... When we go through those hardships, the outside world, you know, has a tendency to want to call us strong, but that doesn't mean through the process that it doesn't hurt. You know what I mean? So I just, I just want to commend you for, for your resilience and for your positivity. Thank you. I appreciate that. Cause it is hard. I cannot, I cannot lie. Like right now I just finished a, a figure modeling class. Mm-hmm. And I I stood there in my in my panties and bra, which do not match, but I didn't care. <laughs> mm-hmm. But they were sketching me out, and in the whole moment, like I had to hold a pose for twenty five minutes, and I'm just like, what am I going to do while I'm do- I'm standing here? Like, what do I think about? What am I? And all my mind kept saying is just float. And I'm just like, but if I float, then I'm not going to see where I'm going. And it, and it said, that's the point. You don't need to see where you're going. Just trust that you're going to get there. Mm. And I, when I tell you, like, 
if if I'm being even more honest, like my aunt just had a brain aneurysm two days ago and is in a coma. Uh-huh. And wow. so I just have a lot on my mind, but I'm like, Christina, none of the, these things that are going on can you change at the moment. Mm-hmm. So the moment that you stress out because it's happened, it's happening is one thing. But the moment that you sit in that, oh, my gosh, this is still happening is when it gets dangerous because you still can't change it even though it's still happening. Mm-hmm. And so I can either choose to cry every day and wallow in it. And it's very hard not to because you love the people you love. You want to be stable. You you know, like all this is already going around, uh, around you with the pandemic. Mm-hmm. And so it makes you feel like you, sh- you, you should feel how you feel. But because, again, with social media, y- you don't see people actually speaking on their true feelings. Mm-hmm. Because we see people living the lavish life or only speaking positivity. And sometimes people need to see that on the other side of AGT or being a star is real life situations, are yes. real life situations where you have no control, but mm-hmm. you have to continue. And because we are told to keep masking everything, I don't want to mask. And so... Mm-hmm. That's how I'm able to be this transparent, but I'm also helping and healing myself talking to you. So mm. I, I just, it just, it's, it's working its way around. It's working its way around. I have goosebumps. Like, thank you so much for even just sharing that part. Like this podcast, like I started this three years ago and Originally, my original intention for it was very different. And I'm just blessed and grateful for what it has turned into because not only have these conversations been you ladies ministering to me and it's been free therapy for me, <laughs> but but the impact that we are co-creating for other people that are listening. Yeah. Like, you know, I get mm-hmm. the DMs and I get the messages and I hear how these episodes are impacting lives. So your transparency it is not taken for granted. Like it is saving lives out here because there are women who are feeling like they are alone in their situation, feeling like nobody understands. And then you come on and you are transparent and they're like, Oh my goodness. Like she's (laughs) experiencing what I went through. How is that possible? You know? And then they, they stop, you know, putting people on this pedestal because of, you know, certain blessings and realize that we are all still human. We all Absolutely. still have human experiences. Yes. So what yes. would you say is your superpower? Ooh, my superpower is healing, um, healing while hurt. Mm. Because um, I feel like to heal is not so much the a choice of yours, but to be transparent in your hurt and heal is a choice. Mm-hmm. Like, I know that... I, when I was a younger, like younger in middle school or maybe high school, high school, I had to sing at this church. And this lady said this real scary thing to me. And she was just like, you, you uh, deliver people when you sing. And I'm just like, I'm not trying to deliver nobody. I don't want to <laughs> sing nobody. Leave me alone. <laughs> like, why are you telling me this? Like, and, and the thing was, she was saying, you, you help and heal people when you sing and I get told all the time, Christina, you need to go sing gospel. It's so much easier. They're more accepting of body. And I'm just like, I don't care about being chubby in a pop world. Like Mm -hmm. that doesn't bother me. But, but when I sing crazy and, uh, and I mix it with in the air tonight, I've had more people come to me and say, thank you for singing crazy tonight because when I went home, I was going to commit suicide wow. or thank wow. you so much for singing in the air tonight because I need what I need right now to come. And I feel like it's on its way because of you. And in in, in those, they, they just transferred even more healing to me because mm. I feel while I feel like an empty cup, <laughs> They are saying you are you are still plentiful. You are still full yes. of life. You are full of healing, and so it's 
a recycling thing where I think that I'm just healing somebody else, but the moment they open up their mouth, they're refilling my cup with what I just poured out because I mm-hmm. don't feel like I have much to pour. And so my superhero will be healing because many people believe in the healing of others, but we don't ever believe in the healing of ourselves. Mm. And so the fact that I can heal while healing and hurting at the same time is, I would have to say, my superpower just for the fact that it's not always a choice. Wow. I have I have goosebumps and tears. <laughs> no like that was so beautiful and wow so you just even sharing that have helped me you know sometimes we don't realize and I say this on the show all the time like our stories may be about us but they're not only for us and you sharing all that you've shared today like not only has that helped open my eyes or confirm things for me, but like it is helping me on my healing journey. And I know that there are women listening that you are helping as well. And, you know, I always talk about not pouring from an empty cup. I always talk about, you know, filling our cup first and pouring from the saucer, but just in you speaking your truth and even when you sing and sharing your voice, you are helping to heal and fill other people's cups and the feedback that you get from the people that you are making an impact on, like the, you know, the beautiful messages about how you've made a difference in someone else's life just through singing or just through owning your truth. Like that Mm -hmm. is how you are blessing. That is how you are serving. And I'm, you know, a true believer in, in service and, just I'm almost speechless because I'm I'm like I'm overheating right now. I'm getting really hot. <laughs> <laughs> like I, I just want to be one of those people that tell you, and I'm sure you hear it often, but I want to be one of those people that tell you you are gifted. Like the moment you walked on that stage, I was watching the show with a friend of mine and I was like, oh, she can sing. I can see it. She can sing. And you sang and I got goosebumps and I cried and he laughed at me and called me a punk. Okay. So before we go to the final segment of the show, I want you to tell people where they could stay connected with you online so they can get more from Christina Ray. So to stay privy with me or to figure out where I'm going to be next, you can follow me uh, on Instagram and and on Facebook um, at Christina Ray Sing. That is C R I S T I N A R A E S I N G, Christina Ray Singh. And um, any other platform that I'm on, you can, on TikTok, I really don't use them because I feel like I need a tutorial. <laughs> but you can find me at um, Christina Ray Singh on TikTok as well as uh, Twitter. My verified page on Twitter was hacked. So mm. now it's just my other page like that's boring and i really don't know how to use twitter anymore but you know it's there if y'all want to follow me all of them are christina racing no h in christina and no s after g awesome awesome so i will definitely have the direct links in the detailed section of the episode so they can just click and connect with you directly they don't have to search too far and um, whenever you're ready for those TikTok tutorials, I will ask my daughter, my 20 year old daughter. She's um, she just hit 1.3 mil on TikTok, and I don't I don't understand I don't understand the platform. Oh so <laughs> I will get her to give you a Is tutorial. Is she making money yet? Yes, She's and like <laughs> I'm gonna say yes and no. Um, she was monetizing her Instagram, so she's at like half a million on Instagram, but um, she was monetizing it pretty well, and then she's been pretty sick for the past almost two years now. Um, so when she goes on TikTok, that's kind of her um, therapy to, you know, when she's feeling better, she does a couple dances and then, you know, they just love her red locks and, you know, her face. She's young. <laughs> I'll get you her to give you a tutorial. Yes, I need her. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So the final segment of the show, it's almost like a rapid fire. I call it a walk in her wisdom. And I just ask a couple of quick reflection questions and you can share the first thing that comes to mind, whether that one word or one sentence. Sometimes I ask you to unpack because I like to break my own rules. 
Okay. All right. First question. If you could have a gigantic billboard anywhere with anything on it, what would it say and why? Spread love because people are walking dead out here mm-hmm. without it because they don't believe it for themselves and they don't believe that they are love. So it would have to be spread love because I felt that I've lacked it um, from people a lot of times and it's just we speak it differently. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Wow, that's powerful. You know, yeah. and now I'm going to elaborate my own rules. Like that is powerful on so many different levels because you know I'm a big fan of the the five love languages and understanding that we receive love in different ways. You know, our our minds uh, view love differently. So yeah. understanding how someone else needs to be loved versus how we choose to love them is also important because if we don't, they still don't feel the love. Mm-hmm. Mm. Mm-hmm. Okay. What failure has taught you the most about life? Oh, failures have taught me that I never fail or lose. I just learn. Mm. And my honey, he, that's his, his quote. Like I never lose a uh, fail or lose. I just, I learn, and sometimes we just take failure so hard that we it's learning us more than we're learning it. Mm-hmm. And, mm-hmm. and failure, it just meant not right now. And we we are so definite in our being that we don't think that anything is temporary except like things that like candles. <laughs> are temporary. Mm-hmm. And those are temporary to our minds and everything, but failure is temporary and we accept it as the rest of our lives. We're mm-hmm. just gonna be a failure. And that's that's the furthest thing from the truth. It's wow. So learn from it. I love that. What new belief, behavior, or habit has improved your life in the last five years? Be okay being by yourself. Um, With the pandemic, the first thing I felt when when they were speaking of shutting down the world, or what I think is the world, (laughs) um, (laughs) I felt lonely for the people that need people. Mm -hmm. Because I'm not okay being by themselves because being by themselves requires getting to know self and we are we don't know ourselves we don't take the time to sit and say what is it that I truly like what is it that I truly want because everything that we want is normally because we see somebody else wanting it Mm -hmm. or someone else has and we get mixed up with is this my want or is this Patricia want is this my Mm -hmm. want or is this my baby's want we we don't know because we've made everybody's identity our own identity and Mm. we would get lost in that so everybody right now is probably in an identity crisis or Mm -hmm. was in an identity because you had to sit with yourself and that is a very scary part of life when you've not been forced or even allowed yourself to sit with yourself i absolutely agree one thousand (laughs) percent You know, the same way that we would get to know a new partner that we're, you know, that's courting us for a relationship, the same way that we get to know our children or our family members, we know the sound of their voice or, you know, we can recognize them from the back of their head from, you know, across the room. We don't take that time to get to know ourselves. You know, like you said, a lot of people don't sit with themselves to get to know what they really want or what's important to them. Like when I, when I coach my clients, that's one of the first things we do in our session. Like, what do you want? Forget what your husband said. Forget what your parents said. Like, what do you want? And most people don't even know right away because they've never been asked that question or they've never sat with themselves long enough to even think of that answer. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Name one of the most worthwhile investments that you've ever made. And that could be of money, time, energy. Okay. So before the pandemic, I moved to New York. To um, which I was a part of a company there called Company XIV, and I did burlesque, mm. and it was empowering 
for me because as a plus size woman in America, it is you're just the most unhealthiest, you're greedy, you're selfish if you're plus size, if you're sick. And in he in this show, um, the first show I had to do was Queen of Hearts. And I had on this corset that pulled my ribs to the max. <laughs> no, it wasn't <laughs> my ribs, but it had me snatched, so snatched mm-hmm. to where, like, at the end of the week, and I had a break for two days, I would feel my organs drop or, like, oh, wow. release themselves. And so, like, I did that, but in the second show, I was uh, one of the candies for the Nutcracker Rouge, and I had to come out in a corset with these cute little bedazzled panties. Um, <laughs> I had under uh, under a, a beautiful fluorescent uh, gown, and they take it off of me on stage, and then I have on this bra that is to be detached away from my body, and I have pasties on, and <laughs> that was a huge investment because I have big boobies, okay, and <laughs> some here like, oh my gosh, everybody's gonna see my body, everybody's mm-hmm. just gonna, I don't know. But in that moment, I invested in me and empowered myself where I was, where I mm-hmm. am. New York is a place that never sleeps. That is true. But New York is also a place where you can be authentically you. And if you can survive in the concrete jungle, then you can survive anywhere. So mm-hmm. me being in New York would have been the most, the healthiest and the wealthy, the heaviest, wealthiest investment that I've made in myself because it did require me to um, unfortunately for a few months to leave my baby with my aunt and my mom. And while I'm over there, I'm just like, what in the world did I do? Like my baby is at home. I talk to him every day, but this is driving me nuts. But Mm -hmm. being a mom, I had like, I'm securing our future by investing in me right now. And sometimes Mm -hmm. people are like, your dreams need to end once you're a mom your dreams no. need to, it's a wrap when it comes to you being a mom. And my my baby was the reason that I went. Like, my baby is the reason that at the, right before the pandemic, I had an apartment. And I was getting ready to move my baby there to the point where I had storage and everything. I just had to end my storage <laughs> just mm-hmm. a week ago. But, like. I was constructing this plan for my baby and I, and then it cut off just from COVID. And Mm -hmm. so while I went over there, I got to know who I am by myself because I didn't have a roommate. I stayed in this little bitty studio apartment where my hallway was longer than my bedroom. (laughs) <laughs> and I like I was so happy. Like I'm I cleaned all the time. I mopped like I didn't just mop to clean, but I would like put lavender and sage oil in my mop water and I would sage my floors. Like mm-hmm. I took precedence and like I enjoyed where I was mentally, physically, emotionally. Granted mm-hmm. when I went to New York, my granddad passed while I was there, which wow. tore me to pieces. But I had to keep going and going and going. And so that investment would have to be the most important investment of my life because I was okay being me and I figured out who I was just being by myself in New York. Mm -hmm. Wow. My my condolences about your grandfather. Oh, thank you. Thank you. What, What is one thing people often get wrong about you? That I mean. (laughs) <laughs> so, <laughs> who would ever think that <laughs> I mean because like when I'm okay so I don't know if you're into zodiac times but I'm a Sagittarius so I'm an optimism uh, optimistic person by by nature but I observe a whole lot first before I ever open my mouth mm-hmm. and I read the room and people accept you not being people don't accept you being quiet as you just being quiet. They accept it as you're too good or you just don't want to be bothered or you just don't like people. 
And while sometimes, depending on what's going on, those could be the reasons, <laughs> people just take my, my silence for, like, oh, she hates my gut. And I'm like, I don't. I just need a minute. Mm. Like, I need to peep the room. Like, I need to see what's going on here. Because I'm going to come to take so. <laughs> but I just am a nice person. And people don't, like, don't know that until I open my mouth. You know, I can completely relate to that a thousand percent because so I'm I'm an introvert and people don't realize when I'm in public around people, because I'm such a severe introvert, I get very quiet and I, I shut mm-hmm. down and me just observing the room and feeling the energy people take as me being stuck up or that I think I'm too nice or that, you know, mm-hmm. they, they have all these negative assumptions, not knowing like the inner child in me is like freaking out. <laughs> So I'm just reading all these different energies and thinking in my head, okay, how soon can I get out of here? Absolutely. Where is the exit? Mm -hmm. Yes. (laughs) I get it. I get it. But people, like, don't think somebody is mean just because they are quiet. Like, everybody Mm -hmm. wants to talk to you. This has been an absolute pleasure. Like, before I end... Has there been any question that you haven't answered or that you feel you would love for the listeners to hear or to learn about you um, that I didn't ask you? I, I can't I can't say that there is like but I will say that I am learning to be gentle with myself. And I think that everybody needs to learn to be gentle to themselves, mm-hmm. um, especially in this pandemic. Like, I know I've said it a lot of times, but this pandemic has brought on a lot of PTSD for people. Mm-hmm. It has made people feel like, like, disassociated from themselves within because of everything that's going on. And I just want people to realize that we are all going through traumatizing moments. So be gentle with yourself and how you are handling yourself, not just how you handle the next person, Mm -hmm. but how you are protecting yourself because you matter. And no matter who is saying that you don't, you do matter. You are worth everything that you want. You deserve everything that you want and work smarter, not harder. And that that just takes you being gentle with yourself. Mm -hmm. Wow. Christina Way, thank you so much for not only ministering to me today, but <laughs> for taking the time <laughs> to join us. I truly, truly appreciate you. You're welcome. Most definitely. Thank you. And to all of you legacy leavers out there, until next time, subscribe on all platforms. And we would love to hear what resonated with this episode with you. And you can leave a review on Apple Podcast. And I want to thank every single one of you who has tuned in for the last three years to help us globally rank in the top 1.5% of the most popular podcast in the world. If you could think of, I'm challenging you today to three people, to three women that would receive value from hearing Christina Ray's story, please share it with them. Feel free to screenshot this week's episode. And you can tag us on Instagram. You can tag Christina Ray at Christina Ray Singh. You can tag myself at The Real McKinney Smith and continue to walk in greatness in your stilettos in a manner worthy of your calling. Mm-hmm.